Are you in need of a pretty gift box? This design, with a very clever flip-top liner, is exactly what you've been waiting for. Hey hey, welcome back to Garden's Papercraft. Thank you very much for watching. Now, let me show you the liner. It not only makes the box sturdy, but it has a beautiful finish. And the great thing about this box is that it folds completely flat. And I love that. But uh, I can store my box and my liner until I need them for a gift box. Now in today's video you can see how you can make this box and its liner. And please remember all the details are on my blog as always and the link is below. Um, actually these two boxes are a slightly different size. This was my initial box but I'd made it with paper where you need 11 and a half inches and I know that people in America do not have the 11 and a half inches unless they use a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So I resized it and I can show you these are my notes and I thought these were my final notes but then I decided to make the box just slightly smaller and you can see that the box is made up of several elements. This is the liner, this is the front and this is the side of the box but I'll show you in the video. And there are chapters as well so you can easily skip from one part to the next. Um, these I'm going to show you later, that's for the panels on the box. You need for the box two pieces of cardstock and you need a piece of cardstock for the liner and sadly I had run out of real red cardstock <laughs> so I decided to change the colours and of course with this paper it works equally well. This is the um, designer series paper Sweet Talk and um, if you would like to see more of this paper I will put a link to an unboxing video that I made recently at the end of the video. I'll go into more detail on the sizes later. First let's take a look at the box. As I said, two pieces. There's a front piece and a back piece. I should be correct on this. Let's do some scoring and I'll start with the front piece. This is 11 by 6 and a quarter and you're going to score at half an inch Three and a half, seven and a half, ten and a half. Then you do a quarter turn and you score at one and five eighths and four and five eighths. And while I'm scoring, I'll do the back piece as well. So for the back piece, and I forgot to tell you, didn't I? Um, this is gorgeous grape, and you're going to score with a long side top at three quarters of an inch, three and three quarters, six and three quarters, and nine and three quarters. And we'll continue with folding everything. Now the reason that this box is made up of several parts is because the paper isn't big enough for this size of box. So let me get my scissors out. You're going to do some cutting first on the back piece and all you do is you make tiny wedges along these two ends. Don't cut in too deeply because then the box won't remain closed. So this is all that is necessary. So that's the back piece. This is the front piece. And we're going to do some scoring. Uh, listen to me scoring. I've already scored. Um, we're going to do some cutting here as well. First I'm going to put some tear and tape down. These are just the only two strips of tear and tape needed. And I'm going to use some pencil marks as well because I want to do my cutting neatly. So I just align my score lines with score lines on the grid paper and then on these two flaps, so here, there, bottom as well, you're going to put pencil marks a quarter inch in from the score mark, the score line on the paper 
and the grid line on your grid paper. So now I know where to start cutting. Now, first of all, you wedge this bit, see? And now I'm going to cut from that pencil mark to the corner. And a tip for you, when you do this cutting and you have to cover a larger distance, don't look where your scissors are, but look where your scissors are going to go. That's a trick I learned from the nuns in primary school. And then you get a neat cut line. So again, I'm, of course, obviously I'm looking first where my pencil mark is, but apart from that, I'm looking at that point there to do my cutting. Then you end up in the right corner. Here again, I can wedge, and this one of course as well. So repeating, I'm starting at the pencil mark and I'm directing my scissors to that corner. Now these bits have to go, so you fold in this flap and along this score line you just cut away that flap entirely. So this is now the front of your box and you can see how it will come together because the flaps are the bottom and the side and you're going to attach the back flap to it like this, you see? Now that's easy enough to do. Make sure you stick it on <laughs> the right place because yesterday I did it there and because of that I ran out of real red paper. That's the real reason why. Anyway, so what I do is I just put this one with the front side down on the table and then I can remove the backing paper and then I just move these two bits together looking for the score lines so that they match top and bottom and then I let go of the flap and stick it down. Now all I have to do is fold this one over so first you fold this one over and then you put that one over and it's easy enough to stick your, bo to stick your box together then. So I'm folding this flat. Again I'm looking for where the score lines match and I'm making sure that it's straight and this is then the box. Now for the decoration it's easier to stick your panels on while your box is still flat. But first I'm going to determine which is going to be the top of my box. Now either end would work, but once you've made up your mind, it may be important for which panel you want to have as the decoration. Because you see, these flow in together, and so do these. So either you want this one on top, and then this on the front, or the other two. And I think I'll go for this one on top. So these two can become the top, uh, sorry, the back and the bottom. This is going to be the top and this is going to be the front. And these are the side panels. Um, by the way, the measurements are of this sweet talk paper. These four pieces are three and three quarters by two and three quarters. And for the side panels, they are two and three quarters by two and three quarters each. So... I'm putting these over here. So this is going to be the top one and this is going to be the front one. So I'm opening my box again, putting it flat. Now I'm turning it over and I'm going to stick this one on the top. And these panels are just a quarter inch smaller than the original panel. So this is now the top of my box and you see this is going to fold over like that. So this is going to be the front and it's going to continue with the heart there. I dislike the look of that. You don't have to. And certainly if your paper has no direction to it you could stick it on any way you please. But with this paper there is a direction because the hearts go that way. And I thought it might be a nice look for the front of the box because that is what people will be seeing most of all, won't it? The front, not so much the back or the bottom. So you can see now, when I close my box, that the pattern continues. And I just like the look of that.
So that is the box finished and the liner I'm going to make first of all or the label no I'll make the liner first of all this is a piece of blushing bride and it measures 11 inches by seven and three quarters and now I've seen that I've lost my scoring tool now I haven't lost it and with a long side top you're going to score it at one and a half at four and three eighths at seven and a quarter and ten and one eighth and then with a short side top you score at one inch and you score at three and seven eighths of an inch and you're going to cut off these bits but you're going to save them that's important but first of all I'm going to do my folding and I'll show you my design why not I hope it shows on camera so this was my piece of cardstock you're going to cut away these three and the bottom one and then you do save these and I'll show you why um, first of all let's do some cutting so the narrow bit that's the top so that is where you cut away those three panels so that's one two and the third one and here you just cut along the score line as well so don't throw these away then here you're going to cut away these two and this is going to be the top and here you can make a notch with a punch and I've used a one inch circle punch now this is slightly under four inches so you sort of put it somewhere midway between the two and the two inches on your grid paper pencil mark a circle punch and you punch the notch which makes it easier to open your box this you can wedge a neat little wedge now here you need one more flap and the paper is just not big enough not even <coughs> sorry <coughs> excuse me <coughs> not even a 12 or 12 piece of paper so we're going to use these two pieces to create the side flap so here I'm going to cut away now they're equal in size so it doesn't really matter which one you take so this one is going to be my other flap and I'm going to use this one as a glue flap so I'll just cut it up and there as well and then you cut it in like that and this can now be your glue flap see what I'm at so my multi-purpose liquid glue again You see the total width of this oh is eleven and three quarter inches. Well never mind. That's because <laughs> that's because I resized my box before it was just too big. So now you would be able to but you would need a twelve by twelve piece of cardstock and of course with a letter cardstock or an A4 piece of cardstock it works equally well. So this you can fold over and up and slide it into your box. Let me get my box again. So you put the bottom in, side flaps, and there we go. And you have a box with a flip top liner, and I forgot to wedge this one. So just a teeny tiny wedge, makes it look better. And there we go. 
Now for the label, I've used the stamp set Sweet Conversations and the matching Sweetheart's Dice von Harte in Dutch. And this is the sweet little label and I've used these three hearts for my cutouts. And, oh, I haven't shown you the label in detail yet, have I? See, this is it. And I'll show you how you can make it. I've also used adhesive sheets. And I started, and I did some work in preparation. Um, I've already made one half. That's two hearts. And there's one heart missing. Here are my other hearts. Ah, there it is. Okay, so I started out by using this stamp, stamped it twice in gorgeous grape, and stamped off. And then I used my die to die cut the hearts, and I have the hearts left, and the outer edge is stuck on this piece. Now I've die cut my label twice. And I've also die cut the hearts and then in gorgeous crepe with adhesive sheet on the back. And then you get the hearts with the hearts inside. Shall I? I'll show you. Hang on. I'm kind of a visual person myself, so I decided to show you. So you can poke out these hearts and you see how they work. And then you have the outer edge of the hearts, and I did the same thing with these, so these are the leftover hearts, the same as those purple ones. Then I got this little stamp from the stamp set, and I want some paper to stamp off on. I don't know where I put it, I'll just use the back of my notes. And you stamp off, so you get a lighter colour, like this, and then you can stamp on your label. Now I'm going to use this part, and because I have the adhesive sheet on the back, it's easy to attach it. Right, so that's the label finished, and now I can use it on my box. And here I have the, oh, what is it called, the sheer ribbon in gorgeous grape as well. Now, of course, you could have a bow or just a knot. I think I'll go with a knot here. I'll just use these tweezers to hold the two together. It's easier. And there we go. And this label I attach using the gold trim. Now this is my box finished, and here you have a look at the other one. Now if you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up, it helps me grow my channel. And do leave me a question or a comment, I really love to hear from you. So thank you in advance, thank you for watching, and don't forget to look at the videos that I'm suggesting here. And one of them is of course the video that I promised on the paper, and of course the um, other product, Indiscreet Conversations. Sweet. So thank you for watching. Bye-bye.